important the idea for me is about the physical experience, about the tactility, and about uh, how you how you change the things by touching them. So, well, it, for me, it's very physical. If we shall this have offended, think that this and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. When did you first get interested in puppets? <laughs> That's a long time ago, but it was an accident, I think, because I had a friend. Uh, I had actually I had nothing to do with puppets before I, I started studying the, the puppets academy or the theater academy. Did you go to Damu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, I went straight to Damu, and before I I didn't have uh, basically no no experience with puppets. Uh, when a friend of mine told me that uh, she was there in the Call the exam, exam. The, the teacher? No. No, like the, when you when you try to enter the school, and then she was describing like the whole thing. It's, uh, it, it 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 sounded so interesting that I just went there, and tried to uh, tried to have some new adventure because I was basically interested in any kind of art mm -hmm. at that time. I was eighteen years old, so. Well, I went there and then I suddenly was a student of the Theatre Academy and then... So you'd never really thought about it before? No. Had you seen uh, many puppet shows as a kid or...? Uh, well, I guess I, I had... Uh, it was like no. normal. Like right. we, we, had, we had lots of uh, puppet, uh, puppet movies. Right, right. Yeah, so you saw like Spadel and Hervenak, yeah, and for sure. But uh, also, Trinka, yeah, Trinka, all the moves from Trinka, and uh, lots of lots of stuff like uh, the animated, the animation from Karel Zeman and all those things. And uh, I like. It. But I'm from a very small town, so I was like no theater at all, or anything like that. So it was basically I was dreaming about this kind of things. Then I just tried and then I, <laughs> I started to study and well it was fun, I had fun. And basically in the beginning I, I was thinking more about the theatre itself, like the drama, the, you know, like to be an actor and stuff. But then like during the process I, I, I realized that I like much more the puppets and working with objects and... What was it that attracted you what, what started to get to you i i don't know I, I guess i was always thinking about uh, 
working with the objects, like the the the, the experience of of touch somehow, than to be on stage and, and act as a character. And I was not very. It was not so tempting for me, but this like to have a small puppet theater to to be able to make everything and prepare and, and work a little bit. It's just different kind of experience. It's a, I guess it's a lot of touch, like this, this sense of touch. It's no, tactile, very really. yeah, tactile. Yeah. Did you start studying? Puppetry specifically, Czech puppetry, or uh, during Damu? Yeah, in Damu, it, the, it, the program was called uh, Alternative Acting and Puppetry, or Alternative Acting. So that uh, was what we studied. But some of my friends went more like uh, to uh, do acting, and some of, some of them were more interested in puppetry. What kind of uh, things did you do when you were like making a project for the class or for the? Um, do you remember any? Well, it was lots of different things. But working with uh, any kinds of puppets, but they had puppets, marionettes, and, and stuff. Any kind of the any kind of puppets, and also like working working with the objects. Like the objects of daily use, I don't know, we were animating the object, like whatever we could find. And, you know, to feel the object as a part. Yeah, right. did, did you experiment with animated film while you were there? No, no, not really, not, not, not in that time. I was... Uh, actually, we, we, we all are uh, interested in animated film, like now in, in, the, in the group, but... Uh, during the during the study, no, we, we we had not much connection with. Was that before or after the uh, Velvet Revolution? After. So it was like the, the er early nineties. Like oh, two years after. Right. So it must have been uh, very different than people who were going to school a few years earlier. Yeah, well, for sure, for sure it was different. And, and it was also different, like the general atmosphere must have been very different. And also by that time, the school went, uh, moved from one place to another, like from this Malastrena, mm -hmm. uh, it moved to the main uh, main building where the uh, drama faculty is, so it was like, uh, connect, like the connection. And I guess, it was also like big change for for the for the school because it was very small place here in the historical part of Malastrana and sort of like isolated from other other people or other students and stuff like that. Suddenly we were more like connected or in very downtown in Stalinista near Charles Bridge. So, um, what was the uh, what was your impression of uh, puppetry, and and what you saw of puppetry uh, during that period and in the uh, the '90s uh, in Prague and in other places? Do you think it was a good time, or do you think that puppetry was kind of stepping back because of the difference between uh, the communist era and the present? I think it was a good time for. Uh, like any kind of experiments and people were very hungry for you know like watching strange things and watching unusual things and experimenting and trying the new things and it was it was it was great people were very open to anything and also like uh, lots of lots of foreign people were coming because they wanted to see the you know the happy time after the revolution and stuff so there were lots of people doing workshops and uh, so we met Many people at that time, very different people, and so no, I, I felt like it's it's uh, very open to what where we could do or what we will maybe do in the future. It's very open, and I felt like there is no no 
how to say it, it's uh, lots of things uh, happening like the traditional puppetry was still there and then the young guys like my colleagues now they were they were there already experimenting with some kind of uh, DIY uh, concepts and all these things when did you join book dialogue what year? I think I think it's It was so around 99? 90, 98, 99. Right. So what did you do up till 99? Did you... I was... I was well, after the school, I was... I don't know. There was some certain the period where I was doing, you know, a bit of that. Mm -hmm. that, that. And uh, I was traveling a little bit. And then I was... Uh, Working in Germany with one uh, Russian group, Derevo. I was working. Uh, it's it's more like physical theater group, basically. So I, it was interesting experience. And then I went I went back after one year working with these guys, and then I met Buchtel uh, uh, and well, we knew each other basically from before. But uh, they were uh, working on the project. Uh, there was a concert, uh, Josef K, Joseph K concert, and it was basically like a rock music concert with some puppetry inputs and you know strange like bits of theater. And they needed someone to play guitar, and I was I was around, and I, I could play guitar, so I went there, and then and I just stayed for thirteen years. <laughs> when did they start? When? Yeah. I'll ask that too. But ninety one. Ninety one. So they they'd been doing it for a while before that. So by the time you had joined up, they had already pretty much established, established a certain much. style. Yes. And yes. Um, because I think the crucial thing was this uh, uh, the true true man story. Oh, I don't know. If you know about it? This, this Russian Russian book and the movie they were like Russian hero or Soviet Union hero. Basically, it's about the pilot, and I, I think that was like the crucial moment in the history of the uh, of the group because then the whole aesthetic was aesthetics was like down there in that one piece, like this recycled aesthetics was like uh, they, I think we found it on that in that piece. So since then, it was like also like aesthetically very clear and uh, established uh, right well i'll ask yeah, mark uh, about that all of that were they at the schwandovo duvado at that time no uh we were just talking about it that we we are here for we've been here for 10 years or more or less 10 years because they got this offer from the from the theater uh, city theater Okay. So they were there, uh, they were like three years working there, and then they went back to Prague. And uh, there was this certain period of working in uh, on this like suburb of Prague in one culture house there. But it was not, it was okay, but uh, we were only like maybe this room this big, and everything was in that room. and. Uh, we had a very small uh, place for rehearsing and it was a little bit difficult there. And then we just got this offer to move here because they were reconstructing the theater and uh, new people coming in. And so we got this offer and now it's already 10 years being here. So does does this pay the bills? Do you, are you uh, making, does it pay enough money to support everyone? Uh, like the whole thing or playing this theater because but, well, well you also travel, yeah, uh, we travel and, and you go around the country yes. and yes. other places yeah, yeah, yeah. it does actually it, it does pay the bills well it, it well we have to because we, we spend so much time <laughs> we have so much time and energy in it that it's basically it's necessary for us to, uh, to pay the bills but uh, yeah uh, most of us uh, have like some other jobs as well. Marek is 
teaching and uh, I have other group and some music projects and so on. Uh, but Vitek, for instance, he only, this is the only thing he, he does, so it's like his main job. But most of us, we take this as our main job, so. Um, yeah, so. Which is pretty amazing when you yeah, think about it. Uh, yeah, sometimes we think about it and it, it sounds just uh, weird. Right. Uh, we could do it for 20 years still. Do you get many people who aren't Czech coming? Yeah, sometimes because they're interested in puppets. But uh, in most of our performances, we, we basically we do talk a lot. So it's... It's difficult for them to understand, but I think anyway, anyway, uh, they're coming and they keep coming because they want to see the, the puppetry. Uh, I think it's okay. Uh, we had this. Well, you you saw it, no? The the Hound of Baskerville. Uh, there was lots of speech there, and and uh, people people. Uh, there, we had uh, many foreign people coming and watching the show, and they were kind of okay. Of course, if you know the story, that you could follow. But and then you see like the strange small puppets, right? And it's almost two. It was almost two hours long. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the show I first saw, and I was I walked away going like, wow, because there was a lot going on and just things that. Uh, I had been thinking of what might be possible in some form of art, and suddenly there it was. Uh, I like the uh, the train coming around, although that fell off the tracks that night. And uh, I like the little weird cups of the the tea sizes, uh, you know. And then there was, uh, you know, like the the whole idea of like one box for close ups of hands and th guns and things like that or whatever. And then there was. Uh, uh, the funniest thing to me was when you started reading the book about marshes and swamps, and you just kept reading it and reading it, and I w everyone slowly, like, filed out. But there was so many, uh, it was just, uh, uh, one of the things that has, has uh, struck me is that it, it must be an awful lot of fun coming up with these strange, it's almost like... Um, Issues related to scale, big and little, but mixing them up. Yeah, yeah, that was like I think it's a part of the method or what uh, what we found or what 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 the, these guys found before I joined the group. Uh, we're working with this uh, kind of film uh, influence, the scales and details and zooming and and you know like the editing, the sharp. Uh, changes and stuff like that yeah like last night uh you know they had that fight suddenly where they're losing their arms and legs uh, you know at the swords <laughs> but you know suddenly that's happening there and then goes back into the small mm. and uh those kinds of things are very they're fascinating because they happen quickly yeah well we have to be quick because it's i think this the puppet uh, show is a lot about uh uh, tempo and the dynamic, and you have to you have to keep the tempo for audience to follow. Um, who started uh, the idea of of? I mean, it must have been Marek, I imagine. Uh, who who started the idea of borrowing from films? Uh, no, I think it's Radix. Radix, yeah, because he is uh, very very interested in. Film and filmmaking, and and he was the one who came with the idea of actually the, making the film. So we made this first uh, try of of well, it was several tries, but then the, the film itself we made one, and that's well, I think it's just this uh, main uh, influence where he he brought this. Uh, this scaling and, and this, this kind of things. Interesting. Um, is Rocky Nine like the most successful? Do you think that's the most successful of all the Bukti ones, or uh, is there something else? Uh, hard to say. Maybe at the moment because we had uh, some others, but we don't play them anymore. Like this true man story, and maybe now the Rocky Nine. 
my but we, we I think we played been playing it for twelve years. Maybe. And it's already like it, it's already old. Mm -hmm. Basically everyone saw it. Right. And they already made another Rocky movie. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not nine. Yet. No, no, it's not nine yet. I think it's what six. <laughs> so, um, well, okay. So, what has been the uh, uh, general reception among uh, your audiences? Have you ever had people just completely like not understand what's going on, or the critics? Uh, how have they looked at it, or the other people in in puppetry? Uh, what I think we are like for the critics, we are like uh, some kind of bunch of weirdos, you know, like the weirdos, but they are a little bit like nice. But uh, the, I think they kind of like us because uh, uh, because it's weird, but it's not too weird. It's still like, you know, and I think they take it as, well, this is like an underground puppet theater, stuff like this. But we are official. We not like uh, some kind of punks, or hmm. we go uh, and play all the uh, festivals and and all the meetings of professional puppeteers. We basically almost everywhere. So we have normal relationship with uh, all the other groups and theaters. So we are part of the scene, but we just do it a little bit different, maybe. So it's like. Uh, interesting weird things uh are there any other puppeteers right now that you find interesting yourself to, to watch that mm. well for sure like for for many years it's been uh, for us the, this you uh, are for man the for man brothers and uh, you know, we like them. Are they still active? Yes, yes, but they what they do now is like kind of big production. You know, they started with this uh, small theater, this uh, Baroque opera, and mm -hmm. it was a brilliant piece, really like pure, pure property, very, very well done. And then after years, they were making bigger and bigger productions. And now it's like very close to circus or something between circus and puppet theater and, and uh, cabaret or how to describe it. I noticed there's a lot of that sort of thing both here and in Poland. And they have, oh that's also uh, important that they have the co-production with French, French group from Romani and so they are like uh, most of the time in, in, in France as well, and Spain, so they are working abroad a lot. Yeah, and the, or what more? There's uh, Petr and Nickel. Yeah, for sure, Petr and Nickel, but uh, yes. What is, I haven't seen anything about him. I've just seen a few photographs when he performs, What I know he does other art as well. Yeah, yeah, what, what are his performances artists. like? Uh, I haven't seen his work lately, uh, but uh, I think it's more like combination of visual art or visual theater and some kind of like physical theater, a little bit working with objects and uh, with movements. I saw one image of him moving sand around and projecting that, uh -huh. which is, I guess, some sort of strange art form in Ukraine. People like there's people who do that professionally as a in competitions, okay. you know, sand painting and such. Uh, uh, no, I don't know about it. I, well, I, I haven't seen anything recently, but I remember him maybe ten years ago or maybe even more, and he was he was doing some kind of well, it was very pure puppet theater to me. I, I don't think to all to everyone, but for me it was like very, very pure kind of puppetry without, uh, basically without, with no story, 
it was just uh, some kind of images and, and, and you know like the very intense, very rich visuality and working with objects, lots of objects and found objects and his his objects. But it was it was something something special, something what I've never seen uh, before and after. But uh, I think it was just uh, now 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 he works differently. He, he, he does other things. It was very small production. Now he works in a big or big stage mm -hmm. with actors. What would you say the effect of uh, Jan Schrankmeier has been on um, you or um, Bukti um, um, I, I think it's 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 very big. Yeah. Sure it's very big, and we it's like. Uh, I, I I don't know how about the influence, but uh, we we always speak about him as uh, as uh, as the, cre the creator. But uh, we really like share uh, with all of us. We shared the uh, love for his uh, work, and then especially the early work, which was like very very much about puppetry and using puppetry in a special way. And it's it's great. I think we, we, we certainly have been influenced by the aesthetics, uh, uh, especially because it was also like what 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 he does and what he did has a very consequent aesthetics and really using that. Uh, no, I I wouldn't even call it recycled because it's just like the. This touch of decadency, or this, you know, the rotten things and bones and and old objects. Yeah, it's very special, and we I think we share this aesthetics. The use of certain kinds of textures and the tactile yeah, feeling yeah, yes, of them. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and the found basically like the found found objects because that's what we love to use. Like what we found any kind of found objects and, and we have piles of objects everywhere and then we, we don't know whether this will be any any use in, in the future but then one day it's very good. <laughs> it's the right moment for this object to be used and so this was waiting here in the corner, I don't know, for 10 years. But that's, yeah, the found objects. <laughs> it's great. Uh, who's the person who uh, uses food a lot in food? Yeah, because I noticed there was bread and apples. I know at one point there was a show where a little someone was eating an apple and they stuck it on the stage, and suddenly it's a character. Uh, whose whose ideas are those? I don't know. I think it goes together with right because it's it's a very unusual idea. I mean, it's not a normal. Like when you think of theater, putting like like ha like last night having the the sword come out of a loaf of bread and then going in and pulling it apart to sh if you didn't pull it apart every uh, you wouldn't really know it was a loaf of bread but as soon as you pull it apart you're going like wait a minute which is it's, so it's like taking something from way over here and putting it uh, yeah. in there and uh, I guess it's something where we like it, and we have it you know almost in the Every show we have something like that. I think it's the part of it, like like it's or it's some kind of connection that you feel the organic connection between you and your personal life and and the theater. It's like you put your bread on the theater, and you can even eat it, or or a puppet can eat it. Well, it's almost like reinventing uh, the grammar for puppets, <laughs> so that it's instead of being just uh, little homunculus or animals. Suddenly, it could be, you know, this or this or this or anything. Yes, but at the same time, uh, we feel like uh, very much connected with traditional puppetry because I don't know. Somehow, we like the size of the stage and uh, all the all the objects and then tools and uh, also the puppets. But we have this big collection of old puppets, they all just look great and no matter they are broken or you know like dirty and missing parts and they they basically even even nicer with all the handicaps. 
So it's like the, the somehow that we like this feel of uh, imperfection in in what we do, or you know, basically in theater or the puppet theater is where we feel like it, it goes together with the imperfection and so some because it's so old, like the tradition is so old. Uh, well, how does that relate to a world where, like you know, you have the Novi Smichov, uh, you know, where where you? It, it, I mean, it's almost the exact opposite of uh, the shiny world people want to happen. Is there? Do you think that's a conscious decision to, or is it just something that's developed? Or uh, well, I don't know. It's just the the. Oh, we can, we can't. <clears throat> it's about the, uh, like how to react to, to to the fact that we live in this world with the shopping malls and stuff. But that's just like it's what's happening. I mean, it's it's our environment. But uh, when we work, we we can choose. Like we can make our own environment, and that's like that's fine. That's what we like. <laughs> Uh, we make environment we would uh, we would like to be in, or you know, we take the parts we like, and you know, we like all the, uh, all the items, and then we construct the 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 small world. Do Do you sometimes miss the old dirty Prague? Yes. Well, I do. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was old and dirty, but uh, but for instance. I remember Prague with almost no cars, and it was like uh, different. It was different city, and uh, no cars, no tourists, and uh, like sleepy town. I mean, big city, but sort of sleepy. Uh, kind of like that sleepiness, but uh, that's, it's okay. It, it you you cannot do anything about it. It's the capital of the country, and everybody's coming here and want to see the things and you know go sightseeing and stuff. But it's just there is there is no other way. But well, what what I, I would miss from that time is this the, the emptiness. The 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 pla places left behind. The forgotten places, abandoned places, and, well, and that's what I miss very much. Maybe some of that goes into Bukti Alaki. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, and we have many abandoned and lost uh, objects and things here. And uh, yes, uh, and about also about this reaction to the the the, the commercial world around. I think Radek. It's been. I think it, 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 it happened for the first time. It happened in the show of Kinaim. He came with this aesthetics of uh, like the, the the plastic to uh, toys and dolls, what we, like the Barbie and cans and and you know all these things. And so he brought the Barbies and we we just uh, stuffed them with the wire and. Uh, you know that we were using all these dolls uh, as puppets, and they basically not able to do anything. But it's fine. Uh, it's like the, they they themselves are kind of statement. But if you move them and you oper you operate them, it's already like the message that they are in the in the theater. So it was. I, I I believe there was some kind of reaction, or how we how we think about it, uh, what's happening around us, and how we could uh, use it in what we do. As, but uh, since then, the, this uh, these uh, dolls are kind of struggling with the wooden puppets and other other objects. Uh, it's it's uh, I don't know. Uh, suddenly. It's much easier to go out and then you see some trash bins and you probably would find a Barbie doll there in the trash bin and not anymore anything like these old puppets or you know, it's just how it's changed. <laughs> Vrtulník, 
Vítkem, helikoptéra. No jak by chtěl letět, když máme jenom vrtulník, tak nemůže letět aeroplánem, když nemáme aeroplán. Vyrtaliot. No, vyrtaliot, tak, tak, a co, co chce vidět? Co by? Já co by? Vidět, no, chce vidět, co by, co by nikdo nechce vidět. Na sobě každý peče. Jo, ne, já chci vidět, co by jsem tak jo. Dobře, jo, ilustrálně, co jsme říct, ne, tak hele, jdeme dvacku, přijde zítra ráno na letiště a poletíme, já ho vemu na sobama, jo? Poslouchej, zítra tady. Čau, končím. Nazar. Dvacku. Na stejném místě, rozumíš? Co? Dvacku. To je drahý. Hele, tady jde. Uh, what do you think the value of puppetry is now that everyone has a little screen to look at, a little television monitor, a little, you know, something doing this all day or, you know, yeah. looking at this everywhere you go? You know, what is the value of puppetry in that world? What? I don't know. I think puppetry is magic because you animate the, the, the matter and you make it alive or you know you make it uh, you, you oh it's the, the 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 process of animation that's all about it like you take the piece of wood or you take some whatever you found and you're able to do some uh, theater with it or you know like any kind of art, it's, it's, it's the, the, the process, the, the process is the, like for me it's the most, most interesting and important thing that I still feel like it's a magic, it's like with the photography, you have the, the traditional photography and it's like, it's connected to the alchemy because you, you like literally uh, yeah. uh, capture the light uh, by yeah. the means of the chemical process and then you, you can touch it and it's all very tactile and physical and the digital photography it's like it's all about you know like watching this small screens and and it's a, a, just about information so it's completely virtual and this like puppeteer for me is about the physical experience about the tactility and about uh, how you how you change the things by touching them so what well, it for me it's very physical it's real in a world where things are becoming more unreal yeah because that they are they are becoming so unreal and uh, <coughs> like everything is simulated or it's it's like and it plays the reality the reality is like fake reality and then what we do on the puppet theater of course, it's the completely artificial reality, but any, anyone can tell. Because you see, it's just the puppets. You don't pretend that, uh, like, this is something what I don't like about the drama, because it's, I feel it's a lot about pretending, because the whole uh, act of acting is pretending. Because try to pretend that you are the character. And, and well, the thing is that people believe that it's like it's so real that people believe that you are the character but people don't believe that, the, that your puppet is you or you know it's still you feel the distance and people can see the distance and still you can do everything like you can you can you can make it speak you can you can tell the story you can do everything so th this is like this this is important for me it's because it's real, but it's not. Uh, it's not pretending that it's something else because you, you immediately show uh, that it's what it is. It's a puppet, and people can see you operating the puppet. That's, that's what I like. Sometimes not. Sometimes you go in the puppet theater and everything is like hidden, and you only see the puppets. Yeah, I went to the uh, Salzburg Marionette Theater and there it was almost like the idea that you were actually watching a little being. Yeah, but that's the, uh, the very traditional... Right, right. But I, I love that. But I was thinking oh, yeah, like it would fine. be great to take that level of skill, which is obviously not something you guys work on. You don't work on the skill as much as the invention mm -hmm. and imagination. But it would be interesting if 
people who had you know could control all that you know nine strings and do all this could at the same time put themselves in the kind of frame of mind you guys have but i am af i'm afraid that it's not working together because i i met many many puppeteers with you know like very skilled guys who, uh, who operates the huge controls with so many strings and stuff and it's always like you somehow you it's totally different world I mean we, we can do that also because we we sometimes work for uh, film and then sometimes you have like very difficult stuff to do and, and and it's it's not just traditional marionettes and it's also like objects and you have to imagine how, how you do it and where to put string and stuff and it's like uh, it's, it's sometimes very tough difficult and but uh, well, for me the skills are it's not uh, something which I would very much care about I mean we can, we can, uh, for instance, we can operate uh, the puppets during our show. We, we could operate it like much more, with much bigger care. But that's not what we want. I mean, we, we, in this case, we really don't care, and and we kind of like that. that you know, you you smash the puppets, or you you uh, your the the strings are hanging down, and you just go with the puppets like that. It's like, I don't know, for me it was like part of the process about uh, the thinking, what, what, what is it, what, what's the interesting thing about puppetry or about the puppet, if it's that, if it's the fact that I can operate, uh, I don't know, 12 or 15 string puppet or if it's the fact that I can like imagine uh, the whole thing, the concept of it, you know, that I feel it like in uh, I don't know the consequence of what we do or what we make. What we never, uh, we never been very much interested in showing our skills. But like some of the guys, they're brilliant puppeteers, but they just uh, like to you know, <laughs> smash the puppets. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a kind of better version because when you are so, so much in it then you suddenly appears on some you know extreme side of the one extreme side is this 18 strings puppets and you know moving fluently and smoothly like humans and the the other extreme is that you just don't care <laughs> but we we yeah, I remember some guys who were really very skilled and it, it was always a little bit like they were how to say a little bit too too serious about it mm -hmm. and I don't know maybe it's like music where some people who know all the notes don't experiment in certain ways because Be, what well, because it requires a certain kind of thinking I think because you are focused on one thing or you focused on something else or you just you know you go wild but you, you cannot go wild like that and at the same time think about the perfect order it's just not possible so no. it's probably like two different polarities that's interesting My feeling has been, the more I've thought about it, is that puppetry contains a kind of antidote, not the antidote, but a bit of an antidote to the virtual world that we're also creating. And I think that maybe what the 21st century needs is, um, you know, as many 
little puppet theaters as there are rock bands, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. Pretty much. I, it's it's good uh, good this connection you made the puppet theater and rock bands. For me, it was like for me it was very close because I had all uh, I always had rock bands since I was very young. And then since I got interested in puppet theater, it was for me it was like the not the substitute but the the same kind of attitude. When I was working in the rock band, and then suddenly I appeared to be working in the puppet group. And it was like, it was fine. It was the same kind of feeling, same kind of relationship between members, and also like it's all about self-expression, or the the thing we we do because. Uh, it's not necessarily what the poetry is. Mm -hmm. But for us, yeah, it's more like... I, sometimes I feel we have a rock band. Well, you did make an album. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes.
Hi, this is Burn Power, and some of you may have been wondering, well, where's the documentary, Burn? Where's Gravity from Above? You've been working on this project for so long, certainly it must be, where is it? What's it doing? Well, what it's doing is it's waiting to be edited, which I believe I finally developed the skills on my own after all this time to be able to do that myself. So the two major things I have to worry about is uh, getting the rights to some uh, puppet films and other material that I need to use, and most importantly, uh, getting translations for about, I don't know, uh, 10 hours worth of material. I have uh, subjects in Czech, in Georgian, in French, in Italian, I'm trying to think if I have any other languages. Well, that's enough. The truth is, I could find people who would translate for me cheaply. Uh, and would do it even because they're good friends, they would do it uh, for free or very little money. But I would really like to pay them. And so I need to try to find a way to get money to make those translations. And it's, it's a bit time-consuming for them. So, here's what I'm asking. I'm asking if you want to see Gravity from Above finished, you can contribute to the translation costs, and you can do so through PayPal. There is a link below. And uh, you can uh, give whatever you feel, and as you give through PayPal, they do ask if you want to leave a note, and in the note say, for translation costs. Uh, if you want to help with that. Or you can just say, for whatever you need, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, the truth is, translations are one of the most important things, and it's going to cost me probably a few thousand dollars to get things translated and to pay the translators. So, you know, if you feel like donating, please do. Meanwhile, I can tell you this. I am still working on it, and releasing this uh, interview is part of that. I wanted to show people what I have been doing over the years. So I hope you appreciated this interview, and I hope you think about ways you can support Gravity from Above. And, uh, well, we'll talk more about it later. Meanwhile, let's get the translations done, shall we? Oh, Bill! Vom Skype, hello!